Hello YouTube and welcome to part 2 of Dreams and um, I am excited to be doing this segment because it is my um, favorite well, thing to talk about actually when it comes to my dreams in specific but we'll start off with the fact that dreams are usually occurring during the REM state, the rapid eye movement state which is the deep sleep um, part of when you sleep and it is um, because of your brain trying to process information that is ex it is experienced and a lot of people actually believe that it helps um, problem solving and I totally can vouch for that because I've had dreams where um, I've solved problems in my dreams but the only downside is I couldn't remember that remember it enough to actually remember how I solved it like like life problems like oh I need you know I need to do something about my scheduling for tomorrow and I'll dream like oh I could do this but then I wake up and I'm like what what happened but anyway so basically um, I'm gonna give you a brief overview of uh, like how I dream I have a list actually I wrote because I couldn't remember it all um, on the top of my head so okay so I dream in color I think a lot of people actually do they used to uh, think people dreamt in black and white but that's been disproved I definitely dream in color um, I wouldn't say it's vibrant but there's definitely color like I can tell between red and green and blue yellow purple mauve magenta chartreuse stuff like that um, I can actually taste in my sleep I remember one dream it was delicious I was eating a pizza weird but I could taste the pizza like I could taste the sauce and the pepperoni and the cheese and all that stuff um, kind of bizarre I can't feel other like objects or people in my dream like if somebody in my dream were to come up and actually like touch me I would not feel it and if I remember like in a lot of my dreams I'll reach out to like hug somebody or touch something um, but I normally can't feel them I think I had like one dream where I was picking up my cat and at first it felt heavy but all of a sudden it got really light like I wasn't holding anything so I think my brain was trying to imitate the feeling of weight but it didn't really work because to be honest I don't have any control over my dream dreams <laughs> so um I do sleepwalk and sleep talk a lot um usually we're supposed to grow out of this by the time my childhood is over I have not and I've been reading online that um, it says if you're an adult and you sleepwalk or sleep talk you should probably go see a doctor personally I don't think I need to because the fact is I try to interact with my parents when I sleep talk like I'll go wake them up and just kind of stand there and mumble and then go back to bed it's not like I'm like going downstairs and you know doing dangerous things and trying to eat or open things in my sleep like I just kind of like wander and I I guess I just stand there for a while and I just kind of stare and if somebody you know if one of my parents comes up to me and like what are you doing I guess I like just mumble some nonsense and then I either go back to bed or they steer me in the dire right direction um yeah so that's interesting um I do have nightmares pretty persistently um I'm not sure why I usually have at least two nightmares each night on a lucky day, or a lucky night, I should say, I don't have any, um, but, yeah, I'm not really sure why I have nightmares, other than, um, they say that nightmares are usually a sign of, like, traumatic past, um, and there have been events in my past that have, I guess you could say, traumatized me, and a lot of the dreams revolve around that, and uh, that kind of adds up for me, and then, um, to the extreme, I've had three night terrors in my whole existence <laughs> of uh, being alive. Um, well, I guess I guess it doesn't really count, but my mom said that I would get night terrors as a child, and I would just be like punching and kicking in my sleep, and there was nothing she could do and uh, wait to wake me up or anything. And now as an adult, well, if, okay, I should start over. If you guys don't know what a night terror is, it's uh, usually characterized by having a dream so frightening that you wake up and you're literally paralyzed you cannot move you cannot speak you can't um, you can't do anything to try to move your body or signal to somebody that you're paralyzed
And I would say it is by far the most frightening, just terrifying thing to ever happen. Because first of all, you're waking up from a bad dream that, you know, you might want to get up, turn on the light, you know, go downstairs and get some water to drink and just, you know, shake it off. And you can't move and you're stuck. And it is the most horrifying thing I could ever imagine. I would not wish it on anybody. I seriously wouldn't. Um, but I've had three of those that I actually remembered. Um, so those are not fun. Um, I honestly don't know why I am so I'm so active in my sleep though. Um, I can't remember why we sleepwalk or sleep talk. There's so many theories, um, but I know that it's caused a lot of it's caused by stress. And I could agree to that, because whenever I'm stressed, I sleep, walk, and sleep, talk, like, a lot. Like, I hide stuff from myself. I hid my phone. My phone's usually, like, my alarm clock. And every morning for school, I would hear my alarm go off, and I would get up, and I would tear my room apart trying to find my phone, because I hid it from myself in my sleep. Um, I have had prophetic dreams. Um, a lot of people don't really believe in that stuff, but I do, because it's who I am. Um... I have premonitions, and I think that has a lot to do with synesthesia. Um, so I, whenever I have a prophetic dream, though, it usually happens within one to three years of the dream occurring. Um, and I usually don't remember the dream, like, right off the bat, but when the event actually happens, I remember it, and I'm like, oh my god, I had that dream. That dream, I remember it now, and this, this is what happened. And it's kind of scary. <laughs> But, you know, it's usually that nothing bad happened. Well, once I had a dream that somebody died, some famous actor, I think, Walter Cronkite or something, I don't know. Um, like I said before, um, like when I dream, I can't really feel anything. Um, I can't control my dreams. A lot of people talk about uh, lucid dreaming is where you can control what happens in your dreams. Like if you want to fly, you fly. I have never been able to actually just be like, oh, I want to fly, and I fly. Like, I usually just stand there in my dream, and I'm like, why am I not flying? I can't control it, and I understand it takes a lot of mental exercise to try to do that. But for the life of me, I cannot control what happens in my dream. And it sucks, because sometimes I know it's a dream, and I want something to happen, and it doesn't happen. But I don't really want to wake up, either. It's like, okay. Um, and many times... Like I mentioned before, my dreams are whacked. They are whacked, people. I just, I don't understand. People will talk to me in sign language, body language, or people don't talk to me at all. People in my dream. Um, sometimes animals change. Uh, like the other night I was holding, I dreamt I was holding an infant. And I think it has to do because my best friend is pregnant. And I keep dreaming about babies recently. And I was holding this baby, like a little infant. And it turned into a basketball, and I just started dribbling it. Is that normal? <laughs> My dreams don't make sense, like... People move in a way that doesn't really exist in our physical plane. I can't describe it. It's the same way with my synesthesia. I can't describe certain things that I see because it simply doesn't exist outside the mind. Same with the people in my dreams. They honestly, they don't move the same as normal people would. Like we, you know, we move. But these people are like, they're not even built like people. Um, I would love to go more into that, but I am almost at 10 minutes here and I really need to get through the rest of this stuff. So, Oh, but I just want you guys to know that it doesn't bother me that my dreams are totally whacked and on crack and other drugs, they're not. But it doesn't bother me. Like, a lot of people will be like, isn't that weird? Like, wouldn't you hate dreaming like that all the time? And to be honest, it's kind of interesting because that's my world. You know, that's, that's my world. A lot of people try to interpret dreams, and I find that a very beneficial part of um, your psyche. If you have a dream, um, it usually has some sort of meaning to it that pertains to your waking life. Uh, for example, uh, being naked in public, that's a common dream. And usually that just means um, <clears throat> you're hiding something or you're possibly unprepared for something. Perhaps it's an upcoming test or a job interview, and you could be having dreams about you being naked, and you say, well, what does that have to do with it? But you know, it kind of makes sense that, you know, you're unprepared, oh, you forgot your clothes, so. Um, another dream is falling, 
I have those a lot and that usually is tied in with insecurities just I just have a lot of dreams about falling like seriously falling like a thousand feet in the air and I just watch myself fall to my death and I'm like pinging on like objects as I make my way down and it doesn't hurt but it's really scary um, but yeah, I, I am insecure. I'm an insecure person. Uh, I'm slowly getting over it, but I mean, that's just how I dream. Um, and then there's, uh, dreams about reoccurring, like, dreams that happen over and over. Um, that's kind of tied in with the nightmares. Uh, just, um, I, I have those a lot. I have a lot of reoccurring dreams. And it's associated with trauma associated in the past, or I have to sneeze. <sighs> oh my gosh! It has to do with um, like reoccurring. Uh, it has to do with trauma in the past, or the fact that the problem was not solved. Because, like I said, dreams are also a way of our brain solving problems. But so that is pretty much it um, for part two of dreams. Uh, I'm not sure if there's any really thing about synesthesia in there. I want to say that there's not because I don't dream at all with like colors uh, like and you know like I don't see numbers in my dream like oh there's a one it's red. I just don't see numbers or you know like letters in my dreams. Um, anything that would associate with my waking life of realizing synesthesia. Um, there's no music. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's just the way my brain shutting down the synesthetic part. I have a hair sticking out. That's so annoying. Um, maybe my brain's just like, okay, synesthesia time. And my shoulder popped. Why is this happening? It's like synesthesia time is, you know, just forget about it. We're gonna sleep and relax. Cause sometimes my synesthesia does kind of stress me out. Why is my hair like, I'm stupid. I'm sorry. That's pretty much it for part two. Part three will be um, about when I wake up and remembering dreams if I remember them. So, um, hope you guys enjoyed this part two, and I will see you next time. Bye.